Hi everybody, this is Angelique and I wanted to do a quick uh, chapter from this amazing book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by one of my heroes, Dr. Joe Dispenza. And Dr. Joe Dispenza is a... Um, so, he, I think he's, he's a doctor of chiropractic and he studied biochemistry and he's a and he has a Bachelor of Science degree with an emphasis in Neuroscience. And um, I went to one of his lectures in London and then became hooked and went to one of his workshops and did his meditations and cured myself from hay fever. Although I didn't know that I was going to cure myself from hay fever, I just was interested in his theory. And yeah, so this is his second book. And this is actually a gift to a friend of mine uh, because I don't want to have books. I just want to have Kindle ebooks because I, yeah, can't have too many books in my house. I uh, want to travel light. But um, I just opened this page and I just thought it was so brilliant. I really need to share it. So this is why I love uh, neuroscience and why I love um, visions or visionaries. So this is the chapter Overcoming Your Environment and the subchapter is Greatness is holding fast to a dream independent of the environment. And so he says, before I begin to explore the ways in which you can think greater than your environment and thus break the habit of being yourself, I want to remind you of something. It is possible to think greater than your present reality, and history books are filled with names of people who have done so, men and women such as Martin Luther King Jr., William Wallace, Marie Curie, Mahatma Gandhi, Thomas Edison, and Joan of Arc. Every one of these individuals had a concept in his or her mind of a future reality that existed as a potential in the quantum field. This vision was alive in an inner world of possibilities beyond the senses and in time each of these people made those re ideas a reality. As a common thread, they all had a dream, vision or objective that was much larger than they were. They all believed in a future destiny that was so real in their minds that they began to live as if that dream were already happening. They couldn't see, hear, taste, smell or feel it but they were so possessed by their dream that they acted in a way that corresponded to this potential reality ahead of time. In other words, they behaved as if what they envisioned was already a reality. So, and then he continues. He talks about Gandhi and he says, For a long time, much of the feedback from the external world didn't show Gandhi that he was making a difference, but seldom did he allow the conditions in his environment to control his way of being. He believed in a future that he could not yet see or experience with his senses, but which was so alive in his mind that he could not live any other way. He embraced a new future life while physically living his present life. He understood that the way he was thinking, acting and feeling would change the current conditions in his environment and eventually reality began to change as a result of his efforts. When our behavior match, when our behaviors match our intentions, when our actions are equal to our thoughts, when our minds and our bodies are working together, when our words and our deeds are aligned there is an immense power behind any individual. I'll repeat that again, because this is so amazing, especially when you hear him say it. When our behaviors match our intentions, when our actions are equal to our thoughts, when our minds and our bodies are working together, when our words and our deeds are aligned, there is an immense power behind any individual history's giants, why their dreams were unrealistic nonsense. The greatest individuals in history were unwaveringly committed to a future destiny without any need for immediate feedback from the environment. 
It didn't matter to them if they hadn't yet received any sensory indication or physical evidence of the change they wanted. They must have reminded themselves daily of the reality they were focused upon. Their minds were ahead of their present environment, because their environment no longer controlled the thinking. Very clever. Truly, they were ahead of their time. Another fundamental element shared by each of these cel celebrated beings was that they were clear in their minds about exactly what they wanted to happen. Remember, we leave the how to a greater mind, and they must have known this. Greater mind is very important in Dr. Joe Dispenza's writing and thinking, because the greater mind is actually about aligning yourself with your true nature. So, um, now, some in their day might have called them unrealistic. In fact, they were completely unrealistic, and so were their dreams. The event they were embracing in thought, action, and emotion was not realistic, because the reality had not yet occurred. The ignorant and the cynical might also have said their visions was nonsense, and such naysayers would have been right. A vision of future reality was nonsense. It existed in a reality beyond the senses. So, when one holds a dream independent of the environment, that is greatness. When one holds a dream, independent of the environment, that is greatness. Coming up, we'll see that overcoming the environment is an inextricably linked with overcoming the body, so what we feel all the time, our states, and time. In Gandhi's case, he was not swayed by what was happening in his outer world, in his environment, and he didn't worry about how he felt and what would happen to him, his body, and he didn't care how long it would take to realize the dream of freedom, time. He simply knew that all of these elements would sooner or later bend to his intentions. For all of the giants in history, is it possible that their ideas were thriving in the laboratory of their minds to such an extent that to their brains it was as though the experience had already happened? Can you, too, change who you are by thought alone. And this is page 49, and this book is over 327 pages. So that was it. Amazing book. I have to find it on audio so that I can listen to it. I love his voice. I love listening to Dr. Dole Spenza webinars and um, audios. Anyways, that was it. My inspiration um, for my students that I work with. Think big. Think bigger than the current circumstances. Bye-bye.